his mother. Now, I want to start with you, um, Honorable Ofodili. You heard in that video um, a cross-section of people who were present when Nigeria got independence. Mostly, they said people were happy, mood was optimistic, everybody was um, confident that um, independence will bring good things. Um, two of them said, even though there have been challenges, we have made some progress. But another person described us as a disgrace. What are your thoughts about Nigeria's journey so far? Well, I think that uh, Nigeria uh, has done well in some areas. Um, so um, I don't think it's right to describe it, uh, Nigeria, as a disgrace or the situation. Uh, but sometimes people get frustrated, you know, with a pace of development and sometimes things that we ought to take for granted today, but which we still discuss. You know. And that has really uh, put a wedge, you know, to the advancement to nationhood. So those frustrations are there, but that shouldn't uh, uh, make someone describe Nigeria as a disgrace. Now, so in some areas we've done well, and in other areas we've failed, woefully. Now, um, I want us to look at um, some data, and I'd like to put up a, a little um, slide that talks about our per capita income. So, for example, some of the indices that people use to gauge whether a nation has done well or not, we don't seem to have done particularly um, well when it comes to that. We seem to have sort of started growing and then sort of dipped, and now we seem to be going a little bit backward. Now, you look at finances and money, um, Mala Mali. What are your thoughts regarding at least um, how we are doing economically as a country? Well, economically as a country, in my opinion, I think our productivity is less than average. What is happening today, we've uh, had the oil course since uh, independence. We left our productive uh, endeavors and all relied on oil. And then when you look at uh, our lack of population control, basically the population is growing at the pace or even faster than the economy itself. So that is why you see that the, cap the per capita income is actually reducing as we're growing. Because when you look at our national average, today you're look you looking at about 2.5% population growth or more. And uh, the net growth of the economy over the period has been less than that on the average. And, uh, I think on the economic side, that is our main challenge. Um, Reverend um, Ladi, he talked there about the issue of population growth versus the growth of the country uh, along certain lines. And there's a, um, another slide that I want us to put up, which looks at um, populations that are sort of below the poverty line. And the, Nigeria is number six in the world, and they're talking about 70% of our population being um, living below the poverty line. What are your thoughts on this? Well, let me say quickly that there are two Nigerias. The Nigeria on the surface with some degree of polish, and then the real Nigeria that is represented by more than 70%. So you think the numbers are even higher? Generous. This is very generous. Now, the truth be told, Nigeria is a victim of what we call failure engineering. In Nigeria today, we believe that oil and some minerals and stuff is the most valuable asset. In any nation, it's the people who are the most valuable asset. And what has happened to Nigeria, actually to the African, is that we were engineered to fail. So we have what we call a transculturation program that we inherited at the foundation of Nigeria that itself is corrupt. So it produces corruption. And that's why you find that there are people like all other African nation states we tend to be emotive, intuitive, unscientific. We can't plan ahead. All these things are actually just symptoms of when a more brilliant mind engineers a nation with what they call failure engineering. And unless we understand it and correct it, this country is going to go in, around in circles for another three, 400 years. Okay, and, and I want um, us to get a chance to totally come to grips with the issues of the foundational issues that people feel we had at independence. But before we do, I'd like to bring in Toyosi, and particularly because she's from a generation that, if you like, um, 
are not really can't be blamed for any of this, if, if, if you like. And what are your thoughts on some of what has been said, particularly around the challenges that we face as a country? And what do other young people like you feel? Um, you see, I'm going to try and be practical here. The first thing that I personally think about Nigeria is that you must understand that the Nigerian problem is a carefully tended pet in the hands of the political class. Um, there's almost like a deliberate plan on the part of a section of people, like a, the thieving political class, very few of them, who've held our country hostage for so long. So we define Nigeria as an operative democracy when in actual fact we are te a technical an oligarchy with a very, very strong military on the top. Now, as a young person in this country, when you say that Nigeria is a rich country, I disagree completely. Because you say we are rich because we have oil, but countries are not rich because of what they have. Countries are rich because of the people in there. Countries are rich because they manage their resources. Countries are rich because they deploy the potential of the smartest people in the country. When Nigeria became an independent country in 1960, the United Arab Emirates did not even exist as a federation. Today, the Prime Minister of the UAE is talking about exporting the last barrel of oil. Nigeria is here fighting over an NPC and oil money. We're not thinking about agriculture. We pay lip service to everything. And somebody has got to teach my generation that it pays to work in this country, that we can uphold the values of dignity of labor because this is a country where people sleep with other people's children and get chief dance titles. People steal our money and get doctorate degrees. We do not reward labor. We are a, we're a generation looking up to completely nobody. Our values totally down the drain. So it is, it, is, it is okay for us as a generation. It's okay when you say we cannot be blamed. But you also need to understand that youth is a state of pending responsibility. And that the, as long as the government decides that the role of young people during political seasons and elections would be to be able to use them as thugs and as criminals, there's no way this country can for any, for any reason move forward. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will carry on with this very interesting conversation. Don't go away.